Gregory Bowers, Dasha Antipova, Stephanie Jockman, Geraldine Paredes, Andel Husbands, Jack Dickens, Nyrene Orisha, Max Morinelli, Courtney Cadogan, Sierra Rose, Tuesday, August 1st, 2017. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's the season finale of USF Housing Live! All right, all right, all right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This is the season finale of USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Gregory Bowers, with Housing and Residential Education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, and best place to learn. We've got an amazing lineup of guests tonight. We have the student body president, Monir Carradine. Welcome, Monir. Hello, hello, Greg. Thanks for having me. Glad Happy to have you. you. We also have our vice president, Kent. Welcome, Kent. All right, thank you for having me here. It's, it's a pleasure, definitely, to be here. Well, get ready. We've got a lot of questions coming your way, but first, we're going to start with our first guest. That's Jordan Rawlinson from the Office of New Student Connections. Jordan, how are you doing this evening? Good, good. And how are you, Greg? I'm doing well. You ready for some questions? Sure. Bring it on. All right. Before we get started, I want to let everyone know who's watching. If you have a question, go ahead, type it in the comments, whether you're watching on YouTube in the 2021 group or on the Housing Facebook page. Just type them in. Our social media team will send them to me on the iPad right here on the set. We'll answer you in real time. So we've got a whole lot show coming your way. Jordan, though, yes. tell me, who are you and what do you do here? Uh, my name is Jordan. I work for the Office of New Student Connections. I am a senior peer advisor leader, but people usually just call us PALS for short. Um, so basically, we work with New Student Connections, going to all of the really great events that we put on um, as an office, and then helping new students transition to USF. So tell me a little bit uh, about what New Student Connections does. You mentioned the transition. What else does your office do? So um, like our office name sounds, New Student Connections, our job is to get new students connected. So we have a lot of programs and resources for first year students to make sure that they feel at home here. Because um, a lot of studies have shown that students are more successful and happy at their university when they feel um, like a sense of community that they are a part of. So we have a lot of really great opportunities for new students. And so you mentioned that you're a peer advisor leader, you're a PAL. Uh -huh. uh, what are some of the things that PALs do to create that community here on campus? So um, I think the biggest part of it is being a peer advisor leader. So it's a lot easier to connect with students and help them in their journey as a peer because we've been there, we go to USF ourselves. Um, but as far as what we do, we are at all of the events 99% of the time. There will be multiple PALs at any Week of Welcome events, um, network kickoff and those types of things. Um, and we also do peer coaching. So that means um, meeting up with first year students and checking in to make sure that they are having a really good experience here. And if they are, then to continue to cheer them on. But if they're not, to help them, um, I guess, get the most out of their college experience. And so one of the questions I get a lot, students mention it's a large university and they get a little nervous about finding a connection. And so will New Student Connections help someone who has those concerns? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, one of the best programs or resources that we offer for most students is the network. So it's basically like uh, interest themed groups. So there are things like uh, Transfer and Commuter Network, a video gaming one, um, Tasting and Touring Tampa. So if students feel like they don't have a place to go or a group to hang out with, it's a really easy way to get involved and meet other people that are interested in the same things that they are and do really fun events. Awesome. So what are some of the key fall opportunities that you should be, uh, well, we should have our, our first year students getting out there and attending? Yeah, so um, first and foremost, definitely Week of Welcome and First 50 Days. Um, those are our main event series. So the first few things that are going on as far as during the Week of Welcome um, events and activities is definitely the WOW kickoff. So that is going to be on Thursday, August 17th at 5 o'clock in the um, Marshall Student Center Atrium, so there will be a ton of people there, there will be a DJ, really fun um, event where you just kind of kick off the start of the fall semester. Um, and then on Friday, the following Friday, there is going to be the USF Photo and Pep Rally, which is also a really great tradition that um, our office kind of provides for the university. And then of course, jump into the network, which is like our network kickoff, so getting involved in those interest groups like we kind of mentioned earlier. Awesome. And so, uh, thinking about our first year students, what's some advice you have for them to help them with this transition as they prepare to arrive on campus? Mm, advice for first year students. Um, I think the biggest thing is to just be ready to learn and not just in the classroom, which of course is important, but also about yourself. I think college is 
the best time to learn like what's important to you and what you want to do as far as in your life and the relationships that you're going to form. And so I think being open to that and just taking it all in is really important and to just stand by who you are fearlessly and be proud of that. Awesome. And so we are seeing some questions come in. Don't worry, we're not ignoring you. Some of these are housing questions, and we will get to those in a little bit. But we're still talking with Jordan Rollinson from New Student Connections and, of course, a lot about Week of Welcome. And so as we think more about Week of Welcome um, and then the time beyond, uh, what does New Student Connections offer to students who are looking to explore their interests outside of the classroom? Um, so outside of the classroom, as far as through our office, I think one of the biggest things, like I kind of mentioned, is the network, because that will be going on all semester. So um, it's not just like a one-time event kind of thing. There will be continuous events going on. Um, I think there's like over 80 events between all of the networks to combined. Um, and students can join multiple networks if that's something they're interested in. So that's one way to get involved in our office. Um, peer coaching with a PAL also, if there's something that you want to, that students might want to get involved in. Um, that isn't through our office. Our peer coaching um, and talking with a pal will help them kind of get connected in whatever way that they're interested in, even if they're not sure where to start. We can help them on that journey too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Jordan, do you have a favorite Week of Welcome event? Ooh. Um, if you had to pick one. Probably the kickoff, because I think the energy is just so exciting and it's a really great way to um, kind of get a head start into the fall and get pumped about being at USF and being a bull and meeting new people there too because there are going to be so, so many people there. Awesome. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for coming on the program with us of today. Of course. Yeah, thank you. And of course, if anyone else out there has a question, even though we're going to move on, we're going to talk with Mo Neer and Kent in just a moment, feel free to fire those questions our way and we'll ask them right here during the show. We've got a little video for you about The Village, more housing live coming your way after this. The Village is our newest residential community. Beacon Hall and Summit Hall opened their doors in fall of 2017. Three additional halls, named Endeavor, Horizon, and Pinnacle, will open in the fall of 2018. You can see Horizon Hall construction has already begun. Unique to the village is a dual-style design, with each residence hall including both suite and modern traditional room styles. All rooms include versatile furniture with medium lofts that can be raised to 5 feet high, leaving plenty of space to move a desk underneath. Each resident has their own closet space with dresser, desk, and mobile drawers, so you can easily make adjustments to suit your needs. In suite-style rooms, a sink with marble countertop is located outside the bathroom. The well-appointed bathrooms include plenty of space and contemporary design. Residents living in traditional style rooms will enjoy a modern spin on traditional living, spa bathrooms. These shared bathrooms are designed to offer the best of both worlds, privacy and community. The four shared bathrooms per wing reduce the number of people using any one bathroom, and every bathroom is designed to provide additional privacy. With dual shower heads, a dual vanity, and modern design, you will enjoy both convenience and luxury. While each floor has its own active and quiet lounge, residents from all floors will gather in the first floor amenity space to take advantage of the TV lounge, gaming area, table shuffleboard or table tennis, community kitchen, laundry room, multi-purpose space, conference rooms, and more study nooks and crannies than you can count. What brings the whole village together as a campus gathering space for students, faculty, and staff is the hub and the fit. The hub is home to the housing 24-hour desk and the exciting new all-you-care-to-eat dining facility with multiple restaurant-style venues like a Mongolian grill, coffee shop, and a special allergen-sensitive station. The fit. A 19,000 square foot recreation and wellness center providing weight training equipment, cardio machines, massage chairs, nap pods, and of course, a resort style zero entry outdoor swimming pool. There is nothing better than a quick dip in between classes under the warm Florida sun. Stay up to date on construction progress by selecting the link on the usf.edu slash housing homepage. Perhaps you, will soon call a residence hall in the village your new home. Mark your calendar for August 17th for the housing and dining grand opening and keep an eye out for the fit to open by the end of September.
All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Gregory Bowers, you're not, and guess what? We are now gonna be speaking with Monir, Student Body President, and Kent, Student Body Vice President. And so let's get started with Monir. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Greg, happy to be here. Glad to have you here, and also joining you, your sidekick, your partner in crime, Kent, Vice President, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you, Greg. How well, are you? I'm doing all right, and so, so happy. Thank you both for coming on the program for our season finale. Got a lot of questions for you already set up here, but of course, those watching, send your questions our way. I'll be happy to ask them on behalf of you, of your student body president and vice president. So first question, we're gonna go to Kent. Kent, who are you, and what do you do here? All right, so by my last name, Kent, I'm actually a superhero. All right, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm actually the student body vice president here at the University of South Florida. So um, a bit about myself, I um, study international business and I'm a junior here, so next semester I'll be a junior as well. Um, so I'm an international student, so I come from Trinidad and Tobago. Whoa. All right, thank you. You all love in the room? Yeah, a lot of love in the room. Um, love that, love my island people. Um, but what I do essentially as student body vice president is I represent the students. Um, both Munira and myself, we work tirelessly as we have started so far day in and day out to make sure that the students are represented very well. and. Um, I think we're doing just that so far. All right, awesome. So Monir, tell us a little bit about your role here at USF. Well, thank you, Greg. So yes, my name is Monir. Um, depending on where you may be sitting in the audience, it could be Mo Far. Ah, get it? You know, Had to plug that in. Had to plug it in. The puns, the puns. Since Monir was an incoming student, the puns have been strong. As an orientation leader, their puns were strong. And you know what? I'm quite pleased to know it's continuing. It never stops. It never so far, stops. welcome. Stay consistent. Thank you. That's my superhero name. Um, so I'm actually Kent's sidekick. You said he was my sidekick. I'm his sidekick. Just letting you know. Um, but yeah, so I'm the student vice president elected by our students alongside Kent this past semester. Um, and Kent did a really good job of explaining it. Um, both of us were elected to represent our students in every situation and to ensure the experience of our students is the best that it can be. So we do our best to start new initiatives and create new programming to make the university experience better. But we also do our best to listen to any of the issues that our students are having. So if there's any changes that they want to see on campus, it's our job to make sure that those changes are listened to and that we actually implement them. So how do the students contact you if they want to share input? That's a phenomenal question. So right now, the, ba the main form of contact is through personal contact through our emails. Um, so those are listed on the SG website. But what we're hoping to do is actually set up a system for petitions in this upcoming fall semester, where our students will actually be able to start petitions and get signatures from fellow students for any initiatives or issues that they see around. So if there's any problems or things that they want to see changed, they can actually start a petition, get the support for it, and then if it reaches a certain number, actually our administration addresses it and uh, sends out a formal memo letting everyone know, you know, is this a possibility and how can we go about doing it or why is this something that maybe not isn't isn't reality for right now so yeah all right and so you both have been in office since April so I imagine you've been working on some of your campaign initiatives already is there anything you can share with our viewers yes 100 percent um, so some of the bigger initiatives they do take time so there's a lot that we have to go through to ensure that we can actually accomplish them um, but one thing we have already accomplished is securing funding um, for free feminine hygiene products on campus and so that's something we secured this past summer, um, working with the Senate in our interim budget for our administration. Um, we've actually already secured that, so this upcoming fall, you should be expecting to have those available um, right away. Um, we have a couple other initiatives, actually, and I think Kent would love to talk about them. Kent? All right, so one um, initiative is in regard to our football game. So we kind of negotiated with athletics to kind of enhance the tailgating experience. So what we're going to do, essentially, is the tailgate lot is going to include the student government um, tailgate as well to kind of incorporate the two so students will have access to that free food that they do pay for through their tuition but also have that experience of both of us meshing together and being able to interact with the students. Um, besides that we have been working tirelessly on 24-7 dining. We are working on it, it's not done but we're definitely hoping by the fall semester we'll get it done. We've had numerous conversations with dining um, and we're definitely hoping that um, they kind of see the perspective that we have going forward into the year. So those are some of the big things we've been working on, but we've definitely been working on a lot, both Munir and myself, so great things are coming this year. Awesome, I hear you're both quite busy, and one of the things, if I may make a suggestion, is please bring some buckets of water to the football games, because i got to tell you, I have seen the USF Bulls this past couple of years, and they are literally on fire. And so, you want that bucket of water ready for them. It's going to be an awesome season. Um, and so, um, another question for you here about campaign initiatives. And so, you talked a little bit about stuff you've accomplished. We've got a, a couple minutes before we got to take a break. 
What are some of the major initiatives that you're going to begin working on as we come into the fall? Okay. Um, so we have a wide variety of things that we've heard from our students, things that they have asked us to do, things that people want to see changed. Um, one that I can talk about right away is in regards to printing services. Um, so we've been in negotiations with printing services this past summer, and actually our students should be expecting some trial periods in the upcoming fall semester of different initiatives and kind of ways that printing could be distributed. So we're actually looking at different ways for our student body to print on a, on a daily basis. So whether that includes a $3 a day limit for you know, a week or two weeks so we can test it out and see how it works on our systems, or switching to a three-day system so our students can actually uh, have prints on a three-day rolling basis as opposed to every day, but it would be an increased amount. We're looking at different trials like that as it's always been a problem from our students that we hear that printing just isn't where they want it to be. And so we're trying a lot of different things. As Ken mentioned with dining, you know, dining, while we're working towards 24 to 7 dining, we're going to be doing a trial period with some different initiatives to kind of give our students the opportunity to try these programs and see what is it that's working really well and what is it that isn't, you know, satisfying our students to the extent that we want it to. Um, so our students should be really excited to see a lot of new things to make sure to give us our feedback through our SG website um, to let us know the things that they are liking. All right, excellent. We actually need to take a short oh, break. Go for it, go for it. We're going to be right back with Monir and Ken. I've got a few videos for you and another video about The Village. We're so excited The Village is going to be opening soon. Let's check those out. More Housing Live coming your way right after this. Imagine a residential experience designed to support your success as a student. A home away from home where you can enjoy the numerous amenities our halls have to offer. Imagine living seconds away from your classes surrounded by beautiful scenery, like-minded peers, and exciting events. With USF Housing and Residential Education, you don't have to imagine. Apply today. Maple Hall, housing approximately 230 residents, features suite-style living with double occupancy rooms where four residents share a bathroom. Every resident is provided with a bed, desk, chair, and dresser. Kitchens featuring stoves and ovens are on every floor. Laundry for Maple is located inside of the building. Maple has large pod areas, very similar to those in Juniper Hall and Poplar Hall, where residents can socialize, study, or attend one of the many programs happening throughout the year. Parking for Maple is abundant as well, with parking lots to the south and east. Welcome back, everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Gregory Bowers, and we're speaking with your student body president and vice president, Monir and Kent. And so, uh, Monir, we're talking a little bit about some initiatives that you have going on here, and so I have a little thing to change gears on you briefly in just a moment, but uh, we did get a question from Vincent who wants to know, are there any updates about uh, the village, the hub, and the fit in there? And so I want to let everyone know uh, that Beacon and Summit are the first two village halls to open, and so get excited for that. The hub will also be open for grand opening day, and so be able to use your meal plan there if you have one, and it's also where your 24-hour desk is located if you're in the village. Village. The fit, you got to wait a little bit longer for. It's okay, folks. Good things take time. And so the fit will be opening in early October. I don't have a specific date just yet, but get excited. It has nap pods and, of course, resort style zero entry swimming pool over there. So it's going to be really cool. And check out all the videos we've been playing in this show. And, of course, subscribe to youtube.com slash USF housing. And I got a little question here for Jordan. And so, Jordan, I had the, the question come my way. How do you find out about events on campus? So where can students go to stay in the know? Yeah, so there are always events going on on campus, and there's multiple ways to find out about it. So a lot of them will be advertised on campus in brochures and posters and things like that, um, generally around the Marshall Student Center. But there will always be things available online as well. So the class of um, or the USF class of 2021 page is always a great place to look. And then the New Student Connections website, usf.edu slash new student, um, will have the Week of Welcome and First 50 Days brochure available on there very soon as well. So online resources and on 
campus should be able to answer those questions. All right, thank you. So you heard of folks, New Student Connections, and of course, I appreciate your shameless plug for the 2021 group. Mm -hmm. um, coming back over here to Monier and Kent, and so um, what have you both learned since being elected? You've been in your positions for a few months now, so what have you learned in this time? I'll uh, let Kent go first. So start us off, what have you learned, Kent? <laughs> Um, I've definitely learned a lot about conflict management because um, up there we're in an office where there's a number of student leaders and um, within student government there's about uh, over 100 of us. So in terms of uh, kind of integrating and working together towards that common goal of serving the students, there's obviously going to be different perspectives that students have on how to go about doing things. So kind of being able to mitigate that and see how best we could come with the best solution. I've learned a lot in that aspect, and I think um, it's definitely going to do myself and money well in the future in terms of conflicts that we do have. Um, so conflict management is definitely one that I've learned since being student body vice president. Awesome. So Monir, have you learned anything? Ooh, have I learned anything? That's a that's <laughs> loaded question. Um, let's see. Well, I think for the most part, I've learned about how important it is to stay committed to your word. Um, especially with this past election and everything that um, has happened and everything that we've gone through, it's very critical to, to know that if we tell the students that we're going to do something, we're going to do it. And so I've learned, you know, that doesn't just apply to our initiatives, but that also applies to our office dynamic. So we came in with the mentality of trying to shift the culture and create a very positive, encouraging culture within student government um, and do our best to kind of create an area where everyone feels free and able to kind of embody their ideas and be honest and express their opinions without any judgment. And so, you know, we made that comm commitment when we first started our terms, and thankfully we've been following it thus far. Um, and we've been doing a really good job of making sure that we're doing our best to set a precedent and making sure our actions align with our words. So that's definitely a big learning experience as well. All right, excellent. Thank you. And uh, to Gina, who just asked the question to Monir, that's a very kind question. I'm not going to ask it on the program, but check the comments, Monir. You have a super fan out there, I think. Oh, that's, that's um, my girlfriend. Nice to hear. <laughs> and so you have a new friend. Um, and so uh, Jessica would like to know, um, oh, hey, Greg. Hi, Jessica. Uh, so our housing contracts for the year or semester, so fall, spring contracts are for the academic year, fall, spring. That's really great because you don't have to worry about summer being added when you don't want it. That's its own separate contract if you want to do that. And so if you're staying in Cyprus, but you want to change in the next semester, well, guess what? House and contract doesn't matter where you live. You can change it whenever you want throughout your course of the year. There's no extra fee or anything, and it's all prorated based on the exact date that you make a change if you want to do a room change. And that process opens up two weeks after the start of the semester, and it remains open until two weeks before the close of the semester. And so I have a question here I'd like to know. How do you get involved in student government? So for those students out there, they want to get involved. Where do they go? What do they need to do? All right. So when it comes to getting involved in student government, we've done our best to streamline the process, especially for our first year students. We've seen a lot of the times that a lot of our, our, our positions require a lot of experience or a lot of prior leadership. And so what we've done this year is revamped our street team. And what that means is basically you go to our website, you sign up for our street team, street team which is kind of like our volunteer service. And once you do that, you're kind of put into this da database, this list. Whenever we have events coming up, you're able to volunteer for them, you're able to sign up. Um, but what we're actually doing this year is something new. It's called an internship program. Um, and basically, we're trying to make it so that every single student signs up for a street team can be assigned to intern anywhere in student government that they want to work. So whether you're interested in green initiatives and sustainability on campus, or you want to work with social media and marketing, things like that, we can assign you to the places that you're interested in so you can get on-the-job experience within student government. So the following year, you can actually apply for those positions and know that you have the experience within them. Awesome. So there are opportunities out there. 100%. And right? uh, Kent? All right, so um, I want to put a challenge out there for the freshmen. They have, they have a lot of freshmen that come with a lot of experience from high school. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have jobs still available on our website, and um, we do encourage you to apply because we're open to um, those different perspectives. So look out on our SG website and check out our jobs. And if you're there, go ahead and apply, and we'll definitely look at your application. That sounds great. You heard it here first, folks. Get a job, OK? <laughs> Um, so we have a little bit of time left. I want to make sure I get this question in. What are some of your major goals for this year, the major goals you want to accomplish in your time? Okay, you want to start? All right, so one major goal personally for me would be um, building a home for the National Pan-Hellenic and Multicultural Greek Council. So what those are, those are the um, fraternities and sororities on campus that are more culturally based. So what we realize is that um, our university itself prides itself on diversity, which is great, and we could see it all around us. But in terms of representation for those councils, we don't see it as much as we would like to. So what we want to do is create a space where these organizations could actually utilize and call their home. It will be open to all students, of course, but first priority goes to these students. So um, seeing that done within this year would be a big, big win-win for us. 
So yeah, definitely. All right, any other major goals, Monir? Uh, the biggest thing is transparency with our student body. So you're going to be seeing a lot of multimedia from our, from our end asking for opinions on different items. Um, obviously, we can't fulfill every single need or every single want, but we're doing our best to address them, prioritize them. And so what we're really hoping is that with our transparency and letting our students know exactly what it is we're doing on a bi-weekly basis, we're also hoping to give students the opportunity to have their feedback put in through our petition system and making sure that we just have that communication, which I think could be lacking right now in terms of our students and our student government, is really key to us. So if we can get that accomplished as well, that's a huge one. Awesome. And so we've got about 30 seconds left. From each of you, I can hear, what's your favorite thing about this school? Favorite thing about USF? Oh, ooh, that it's, it has You have to choose one. One thing. It's, it's got to be the people, Greg. It's got to be the people. All right. By, by a large margin. The people, Monir, Kent, your favorite thing about this school? Um, I would say the opportunities. The opportunities to advance and get involved in different things around campus is the favorite thing for me. I was going to say the people, but he stole my answer. So. Always, always stealing your ideas. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Nothing but trouble. Well, thank you so much, both of you. Monir, Kent, really appreciate having you on the show. Hope we can have you back again in the future. We'd Definitely. Love to, 100%. And we've got another question here. Can I still apply to live on campus? Of course you can. USF.edu slash housing. Get your application started right now. More USF Housing Live coming your way right after this. Imagine living in a place where learning is an everyday activity where academic resources are abundant and your peers motivate you to do your best work. Imagine living in a community of like-minded individuals that work to support one another. Imagine finding home in a living learning community. With USF Housing and Residential Education, you don't have to imagine. Apply today. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Gregory Bowers, your host for USF Housing Live. And guess what we figured out during the break? Gina is Monir's girlfriend who would like to know, ask Monir why he's so cute. Well, guess what, Gina? Because he attends the University of South Florida, everyone's cute, everyone's beautiful, inside and out. I want to say a special thank you to everyone for watching the program tonight. A special thank you to our Assistant Vice President for Housing and Residential Education, Anna Hernandez, who support us since the very beginning, way back in March 2014. Thank you to Andy Johnson, my supervisor. Of course, a big special thank you to our amazing, incredible all-student crew. Round of applause for all of you. Thank you so much. It's been a, an honor and a pleasure to serve you in this capacity. We can't wait to meet each and every one of you this fall. And so, wait a minute, I'm just forgetting. There's one last thing. Go Blues! We'll see you next year.